How do woodpeckers avoid concussions? Humans generally use their heads as a neat toolbox to store their brains, except, and often unintentionally, in the case of some sports. In contrast, many species across the animal kingdom intentionally use their brain boxes for activities of a more extreme nature. One of the most extreme and yet commonplace examples of this is headbutting, a behaviour that has been used for millions of years, sometimes as an offensive strategy, often employed by dolphins when feeling threatened for example, but more often between two competing individuals, usually males, each hoping to establish dominance. When it comes to these sparring matches, it doesn't take much to see that these animals are usually endowed with specialised ornaments, to fight but also to protect their heads, such as the antlers of a deer or the horns of a ram. And beyond these distinct external features, many headbutting species are known to have relatively thick skulls, helping to reduce the impact of repetitive blows on their brains. A prime example of this can be seen in musk oxen, arctic juggernauts with a 10cm hornboss and a 7.5cm thick skull. And with a weight of up to 365 kilos, these defences are vital in protecting them as they aggressively collide heads over and over. Yet, incredibly enough, even these protective features do not prevent them from getting brain damage, demonstrating how harmful high-speed head-on collisions really are. So, if armoured heads and skulls don't do the trick for big beefy mammals, how do lightweight birds fare when colliding headfirst? Well, many bird species do actively dive headfirst and at great speeds into water, but the kingfisher certainly is the most delicate looking in this category. Despite their small stature, they repeatedly dive up to 40 km an hour and yet remain unscathed. To understand this, scientists performed a genetic examination of non-diving and diving kingfishers, discovering that some of their genes did actually differ. Of interest was a set of particular genes that control the production of tau. Put simply, tau is a protein that helps cells retain their structure. However, an accumulation of tau is usually negative, in humans at least, often being observed in Alzheimer's patients or in people with recurring head injuries. Whilst diving kingfishers, likely due to these specialized genes, may be able to use tau to actually help reduce trauma to the brain. Plus, on a non-microscopic level, modifications to the size of their brain and beak shape also contribute to this lack of brain trauma. Taking this a step further, what about a bird that uses its head as a literal jackhammer? Woodpeckers, known for their violent and repetitive pecking, are a highly successful family of bird that inhabit every continent aside from Oceania and Antarctica. And when hammering away, they can do so up to 22 times a second, whilst exerting 1200 Gs of pressure on their heads, 10 times the force that can easily concuss a human. And they do so with the aim of finding food, communicating, or creating a nest. Due to the extreme nature of this behaviour, Scientists have been trying to understand exactly what it is that allows them to avoid being constantly concussed. One basic factor, as simple as it may seem, is that woodpeckers control the direction of their pecks, as well as the strength and speed of their pecks, based on the material they are pecking. For example, they will not peck with the same intensity on a metallic surface as they would on foam, given that they have already interacted with the material, of course. For decades, however, the predominant theory has been that woodpeckers have evolved specialised traits, which include a variety of built-in shock absorbers to help cushion the brain when hammering away. To elaborate, this includes strong neck muscles, sturdy yet unequal sized upper and lower beaks, sponge-like bones at various points on the skull, and an unusual set of bones known as the hyoid apparatus that wraps all the way behind the skull, which, in most bird species, is localized much closer to the throat. When it comes to the hyoid apparatus, the belief is that it either directly helps disperse the vibrations from each point of impact, and or that it allows for better control of blood flow via the jugular vein to the brain, allowing for higher volumes of blood to be maintained there, making it fuller and leaving less room for it to slosh back and forward when pecking. However, a 2022 publication has since stated that many of these long-standing claims are misguided, arguing that just the idea of internal shock absorbers is inherently contradictory, explaining that rigid hammering pecks are precisely what make woodpeckers so successful in creating holes. As such, any mechanism that were to reduce the force of their pecs would only lead the birds to hammer harder to maintain their drilling efficiency, rendering any brain cushioning essentially useless. Instead, they posited a very simple solution to this concussion issue, the size of woodpeckers' brains. With their brains being around 700 times smaller than humans, they have a mass that is much lesser than our own, and, due to specific laws of physics, the relative damage inflicted by rapid knocking on the woodpecker's small brain would be significantly less than on larger brains like ours. To illustrate this idea in simple terms, because physics is hard for a zoologist, 
Imagine a regular train with one wagon, travelling at a set speed before abruptly crashing. The result of such a crash would damage the train considerably, even at fairly low speeds, due to the greater mass of the train and its wagon. Now, imagine the same experiment with a tiny toy train, also with a wagon. In this scenario, the crash would have almost no serious effect on the toy train, especially compared to the real train, because of its much smaller mass. Put simply, heavy train plus quick deceleration equals lots of damage, but light train plus quick deceleration equals not so much damage. So, in short, the paper posits that the woodpecker's lighter brain alone could be the answer to this absence of brain damage. However, many scientists are not yet ready to completely dismiss all aspects of the shock absorption theory, maintaining that these mechanisms must serve a purpose, particularly when woodpeckers are learning about new materials. For instance, if a woodpecker encounters a stony pillar-like structure, it may assume it to be a tree and proceed to peck it at full speed and strength. And, even though the woodpecker would quickly realise its mistake, the effects of those initial pecks would be devastating on the brain if it weren't for the shock absorbers. So, these mechanisms may have evolved in response to these learning situations, as opposed to normal pecking events. Finally, scientists have also observed similar buildups of tau in woodpecker brains, like in the kingfisher, which, again, they believe could contribute to some form of improved brain recovery. Regardless of the disagreements around this question, what is certain is that principles gained from the shock absorption theory have already helped to save lives, namely by creating better adapted American football helmets. So, definite answer or not, this, for now, answers one peck of a question.